In the past several years, it has become increasingly clear that static stretching right before lifting weights is a bad idea. Research shows that when static stretches are done before training, your strength performance decreases and this can lead to less muscle development over time. But just because static stretching before your training may be harmful, does not mean that static stretching after or outside of your training session is useless. In a 2017 paper, researchers reviewed 28 studies on the long-term effects of consistent stretching. 14 out of the 28 reviewed studies found a long-term strength benefit in doing static stretching outside of your workout. The other 14 studies found no effect. Even though this is not very clear and strong evidence for static stretching, it does indicate that long-term stretching at least does not harm your performance and may even have small benefits. The potential benefits of static stretching are mostly related to helping you train with greater ranges of motion. Research shows that using full range of motion training usually results in more muscle and strength development than partial rep training. A good example of this is a 2014 study. The researchers found that doing full squats resulted in greater leg muscle growth than doing only partial rep squats. So if you do not have enough range of motion in a muscle to properly execute your exercises, you probably are leaving some gains on the table. Static stretching helps with improving your range of motion since it increases the stretch tolerance of a muscle. In this video, I would like to cover 4 stretches that target common inflexible areas for people that lift weights. To be specific, we're going to stretch the hips and ankles, the hamstrings, and shoulder, chest, and lats. The first stretch is pole squats. This helps mostly stretch your ankles and groin, which are common limiting factors during a squat. With this stretch, you squat down as deep as you can while holding on to a pole and actively look for mobility restrictions. If you find a tight spot, hold the stretch there to release the area. This is one of the stretches I've personally used a lot to improve my squat depth. Next up, we stretch the hamstrings via eccentric hamstring stretches. If you want to improve the range of motion of a muscle, then you want to stretch that muscle in a way that is similar to how it will be trained. So if you want to become better at doing Romanian deadlifts, get yourself into the bottom position of a Romanian deadlift and hold the stretch. This eccentric stretch provides more specific range of motion improvements compared to doing conventional hamstring stretches. To perform this stretch, grab a light dumbbell and perform a Romanian deadlift. Once your hamstrings are completely stretched out, hold the position for about 30 seconds. The third stretch is for the upper body, also known as the child's pose. If you struggle with pressing straight over your head, then usually there is a mobility restriction at the shoulder. To allow your shoulder to travel back further, this child pose stretches your lats, chest and shoulders. It also stretches the low back to some extent. The last stretch is the hip flexor stretch. Since many of us sit down for the majority of the day, tight hip flexors are common. This can interfere with your squat performance. The hip flexor stretch shown here helps release some of that hip flexor tightness. If we look at the current evidence on stretch duration, we see that static stretches between 30 and 60 seconds tend to provide the greatest benefit in mobility. So perform each stretch for 30 to 60 seconds to the point of slight discomfort. There is no need to do very aggressive stretching, this is not more effective for your performance. In terms of how often to do these exercises, I would do two sets of each stretch around two to three times per week. This should be enough to see meaningful improvements in your mobility over time. Also, I want to emphasize that these stretches are not an absolute must for everyone. Stretching by itself has benefits. But if your range of motion on the exercises you do is perfectly fine, there's no urgent need for static stretching. But that's all for this video on static stretching and strength training. If you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I hope to see you in the next video.